It is time to once again dive into the Shogun 2 unit roster and rate the crap out of one of its categories. Hi, my name is Mr. Smartonkey. welcome to the top 7 siege units in Shogun 2. Before we get started, I want to once again mention that this list is as always based mostly on my experiences in legendary difficulty single player campaigns, and thus I would not recommend using this list as a guideline for multiplayer. For this list I judge units on their overall performance, factors include but are not limited to cost, building requirements and campaign limitations. Finally, let's have a look at the contestants. As I alluded to in previous videos in this series, there's a few additions to this list that could have gone in other lists too. The Kisha Ninja and Hanzo Shadows could have been a part of the Sword Infantry list, and the Fire Rockets could have been a part of the Firearm list, but due to reasons previously explained, I decided to include them here. Thus, this list consists of 7 units, 5 of which are available in the base game. These are Fire Bomb Throwers, Kisho Ninja, Fire Rockets, Fire Projecting Mangonels, and European Cannons. The other two were added in through DLC. These are the Hand Mortars and Hanzo Shadows, with the Hand Mortars being exclusive to the Hojo. Now that we are clear on which units are in the list, I'd like to hear your predictions in the comments. Let me know where you think each unit will place. Without any further ado, let's get started with the list. Starting us off at number 7 are the Hand Mortars. I don't think many people will fight me on their placement. A dreary unit that despite the poor overall performance of most units in this list, is outclassed by all. The most obvious comparison is with Fire Rockets, which you will see in this list a little later on. Hand mortars have a little bit more range, but lack the accuracy and killing power the fire rockets have. The strength of the firebomb lies in its continuous arrival. A unit gets hit, falls to the floor, and just as they get up, they get hit by another bomb, and another, until they're all dead. This is what the firebomb thrower and Kisho Ninja provide. But even though hand mortars use the same weapon, their means of delivery is vastly different. Rather than throwing their bombs, they use a launcher, which gives them their incredible range, but it also increases their reload time and makes them unreliable in short range. All the benefits of the firebomb are lost in favour of being able to harass the enemy from further away, but if you want the longer range you're better off with the aforementioned fire rockets or an extra archer. Even their recruitment requirements don't make a lick of sense, needing a gunsmith as well as an armoury. The gunsmith is fair enough, but why in the world would a 300 range unit need the extra armour from an armoury? I never thought I'd say these words, but you'd even be better off with… European cannons. If you watch my top 5 worst units in Shogun 2, which didn't include unique units such as the hand mortars, you'll have seen that I placed the European cannons alongside the fire projecting mangonels at the number 1 spot. Of course, some people argued in the comments, but I was never swayed from my opinion. The points I made about the European cannons are that they are fairly inaccurate, don't do a lot of damage if they do hit, can't be moved once a battle has started, and they slow down your movement on the campaign map. And if that somehow isn't enough to sway you away from them, consider this. You cannot recruit European cannons unless you convert to Christianity and build yourself a Nanbang Quarter. Basically you're spending the better part of a campaign just to be able to recruit one of the worst units available. There are of course some positives that I should mention. European cannons have the longest range of any unit in the game, and thus have the bonus of making the enemy attack you even when you are the attacker, which can be useful in some cases. It is also relatively effective at taking out towers and other such buildings and sieges, but that's not much of a plus point as I generally recommend sieging the enemy out instead. Moving on to number 5, where I have placed the almost as bad fire projecting mangonels. Let's start with the similarities between the cannons and the mangonels. The mangonels also cannot be moved once a battle has started, and slows down your movement on the campaign map. Their range is only slightly lower, and their accuracy is even worse. Their damage on the other hand is quite a bit higher and they too make the enemy come towards you even if you're the attacker. The reason I decided to place the mangonels higher on the list is because of the recruitment requirements. As opposed to the cannons which require you to convert to Christianity and build one of the latest game buildings in the game, the mangonels requirements are much more humble. They simply require a powder maker, which is far easier to build. That is literally the only reason I decided to put them higher on the list, and don't let their number 5 spot fool you either, this unit is utter garbage. Unfortunately, this list is made up of some of the worst shit stained Shogun 2 has ever seen, and on the other hand has some very above average units. Luckily we've almost reached them. At number 4 I have placed Firebomb Throwers. Here's a unit I used to think was utter garbage, but after having used them quite extensively in campaigns such as the Siege Unit Only Challenge, my opinion on them has changed somewhat. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna sit here and say I've made a full 180 and praised them to the heavens. They're still outclassed in most ways, but they certainly have their uses. This was another unit I placed on the top 5 worst units list from a few years ago, and I couldn't tell you right now if I'd take them off or not. But there were a lot of comments at the time of people telling me how they could be used effectively. 
One of which I mentioned in the video itself, and that is defensive sieges. Put these on the walls and have them chuck their bombs down at the men below for a fun time. Another more obscure tactic is to take some Yari Ashigaru in Yari wall and put the fire bombers behind them. Then as the enemy comes in they'll take a few volleys and the remainder will get mopped up by the Yaris. I still think this is a friendly fire disaster waiting to happen, but I suppose trading a few Yari Ashigaru for a load of samurai isn't a bad trade. Having said all that though, you know what other unit does the same thing but better? Kisha Ninja. At number 3 I have placed such a unit, Hanzo Shadows. I think this might be the first hero unit to make it to the top half of a list, although not entirely through its own merit. They are basically a katana hero on steroids. They have very similar stats, and as we saw in last week's list, the katana hero is not a bad hero unit. Their missing abilities such as Banzai and Hold Firm, but in return they get stealth, which makes them invisible until they get very close, and increases their melee attack and charge bonus. The only stat of Hunter's Shadows that is lower than that of the katana hero is their armor. But as they get the stealth ability, they don't have to worry too much about arrows mowing them down before they get into melee. They of course also have firebombs and blinding grenades, which severely debuffs any units it hits. All in all, as far as hero units go, this is certainly one of the better ones. But as it is a hero unit, it is limited to a single unit in campaigns, which is why I place them here. Next up at number 2 are the Kisho Ninja. The unit I've been using so much in my stealth units only challenge campaign that I've gained a newfound respect for them. Kisho Ninja are very similar to Hanzo's Shadows in terms of usability. Unlike the comparison between, for example, Katana Samurai and the Katana Hero, where one is a frontline unit and the other is a specialist unit due to its small unit size, Kisho Ninja and Hanzo Shadows have almost the same unit size and are thus both used in a very similar way. Kisho Ninja are of course still worse from a man to man perspective, but that's what you would expect. They still have access to the stealth ability, which as I said before is mighty useful, and they too have firebombs and blinding grenades. They're not too difficult to recruit, only needing a criminal syndicate, which doesn't require too much of an investment in the arts. But they are on the expensive side, having one of the highest upkeep costs of any unit in the game, with only Great Guard being more expensive. That said, I certainly think they're worth it. Whether you have a couple just to debuff the enemy with blinding grenades, or field an entire army of them like I did in my stealth units only challenge, you'll certainly get your money's worth, although I wouldn't really recommend the latter. Finally at number 1 I have placed Fire Rockets. Similar to the firebomb throwers, I used to think this unit was pretty bad. But unlike with the firebomb throwers, I have certainly made a full 180 and I will praise this unit to the heavens. After I had placed this unit on the top 5 worst units list, many people were up in arms informing me of my stupidity, and I made a video a week later apologizing and explaining my mistake. One thing I didn't realize at the time of the top 5 worst units video is how absolutely insane fire rockets are against smaller units such as heroes, cavalry, or specialist units like Kisho Ninja. I know I say this often, but fire rockets will legitimately destroy any of those units in a single good volley. And of course they still do a ton of damage against larger units too. But assassinating a general at long range in a single fell swoop is too damn satisfying to pass up. The main problem lies as always in the recruitment requirements, needing an arsenal, the final building in the siege chain, meaning you won't be able to get them for a very long time in a campaign, but when you do get them, they are certainly worth it. That's gonna do it for the top 7 siege units. Let me know what you think of my list and tell me which category you'd like to see covered next. Check out my merchandise store if you love Shogun 2 as much as I do. If you enjoy these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon, it really helps me a lot. You'll find all the relative links in the description. Thank you very much for watching, hope you've enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.